Good evening, YouTube. Heir of Carthage here, back in Thrones of Britannia, and officially, the review embargo has lifted. Now, this won't be a review video, like a standard review video, because, honestly, I don't normally do those. I don't have the time. I would really like to, um, but I don't have the time for it. Um, so, I do intend to give you my thoughts on this video now, though, because that review embargo is lifted, I can give you my overall impressions. Um, I did see that Party Elite had a review video out. I haven't looked to see who else did, but you can go check his out. He did kind of more one of those detailed um, review type things, which I don't necessarily agree with every point he made, but I felt like he made his points and he had, you know, video and reasons and stuff to back it up. So just because I didn't agree with him doesn't make it a uh, good review video. So I suggest you go watch that. And he's he's pretty impartial on it too. I'll give him I'll give him that. He's pretty impartial. I think he gives it a uh, a pretty fair shake. Um, but that said, what do I think? Well, this game landed exactly where I expected it to. What do you mean by that, Air? Well, let's take first make sure you know the lens that I'm looking at this game through. So, I am absolutely looking at this game through the lens of Total War Warhammer. Air, why is that? This isn't Warhammer. Fair question, good question. So why do I look at it that way? Well, because Warhammer and Warhammer 2 were the most recent game releases, and so that's what I compare it against, right? Um, now, you could choose to look at it through a different lens. Uh, let's look at this real quick. Guthrie is getting blackmailed. Let's uh, pay off this loser. Um, but in any case, you could choose to look at it through a different lens, and that is, um, you could say, well, I want to compare it to Total War Attila, or since it was the most recent full historical release. And I think that that'd be fair. So I will try and give you both shakes in this so that I'm trying to be fair to it. And I'll just be playing in the background as we as we go along. Uh, go along. Um, so, <laughs> compared to Warhammer, um, and this is going to sound mean, I'm just being honest with it. If you compare this game to Warhammer, then... In, personal opinion, again, this is this is my opinion, then you're in for a disappointment. Um, this game does not have the uh, newer engine that Warhammer does. This game, uh, to me, the battles are very lacking compared to Warhammer. Um, the mechanics are better in Warhammer. The battles are more satisfying. And that's aside from, like, the magic and the monsters and everything else. But if you count those, too, then it's far, far less interesting battle-wise. Um, the factions in Warhammer are more varied. I feel myself drawn back to play the campaign more in Warhammer. Um, so if I'm comparing it to Warhammer, I think it gets beaten badly. Um, but let's take it from that other lens. Let's let's think about it a bit differently here. So let's compare it to Total War Attila. Uh, oh, well, hang on. Back to the Warhammer piece real quick. So to be fair, I just said a bunch of things that I think Warhammer kicks this game in the crotch over. But... Let's flip the coin here and talk about the campaign map and siege battles. So two things that I want to give this game credit for, even when comparing it to Warhammer. The campaign map on this game is very good, and I, I'm torn but tend to feel like I'm liking these minor settlements that they added here. Um, it's kind of neat that they're what drives your economy and your food, and you do have to protect them. It gives you a real reason to be concerned about small enemy armies marauding into your lands because there is, you don't, you're not going to have a garrison or something to protect these. That annoys me sometimes because I hate how the AI does that, but at the same time, it's kind of neat and it kind of makes sense. Like, you can't just have one citadel that represents your, your land, right? You've got to take care of these smaller pieces of land and rebellions and other things do become more of a threat uh, because of that. Uh, also on the campaign map, um, the food mechanic that they've put in works fairly well. Um, it's not super annoying like the Skaven food mechanic or like the, f um, what do you call it, the climate change in Total War Attila. It's fairly easy to manage. It's fairly straightforward. If you run short on food, you start to suffer attrition with your armies. Your recruitment cost food and gold. Kind of makes sense. You got to have, have the food and gold to upkeep an army. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so... That's a neat addition for each of the factions. They've put kind of one of these driving things up here for Northumbria. It's here king, um, which means you're trying to like balance the favor of the English versus your army, the great army. 
um, and it gives you a reason to maybe maybe stop going to war sometimes or appease the English or whatever it is you need to do because right now you know you can see I'm suffering some problems like some public order issues in all regions because I'm ticking off the English that I'm ruling over it's a nice mechanic I, I like it um, the faction screen is very good um, you got your family tree, the political actions, um, governors and estates is cool, how you can have a governor and you can split up the estates amongst your nobles in order to keep them happy and loyal, uh, you know, like this, for instance, um, uh, so we could, we could take this estate, for instance, uh, and reassign it to another one of my, uh, nobles just to keep spreading this out, and it helps keep your folks loyal, you can see the loyalty stays high whenever you're being fair with them, right? So, good things that this game did. The art style in the game is very good. The music is very good. Is it better than Warhammer art and, and music? Eh, that's a matter of opinion. I say no, but it's good. It's its its own thing. Um, so in any case, there you go. That, that was my thoughts. Eh, hang on, it seems like I'm missing one thing. Give me just a second here. I think that mostly covers it in terms of my thoughts this game versus Warhammer. Um, so, oh, the sieges, the sieges, I knew I was forgetting something. So the siege battles in this game, um, apart from the crappy AI and a little bit of pathfinding issues, the sieges in this game are a lot more satisfying. Um, you know, you, you could have still, I think the siege escalation is still in, don't quote me on that because I haven't spent a bunch of time sieging, but I'm pretty sure it's still there from Attila. The siege maps are just better. There's multiple entry points, there's choke points, it's just more fun to fight. The AI is a little worse than it is in Warhammer, but overall, this game got Siege better, uh, Siege way better. There's naval, like you can incur um, uh, a naval, uh, you can do a naval landing into certain places, you know, it's, it's just better. Uh, the maps have more options, more ways to fight, more ways to keep it interesting. That's all there is to it, and in that respect, it's another way in which this game, uh, in, in my opinion, is just better than Warhammer, the Siege battles. CA could have done better. On the siege battles and they just didn't um, we'll don't know the reasoning but they didn't so again just something to, to keep in mind see we just lost some food there see that rebellion was actually a big deal um, it took away a province from me that that actually had some food that I needed see that hurts it hurts bad um, so that's that's again something that you gotta just be more keen on whenever you're playing this game versus others. Look, there's a war up here to the north. It looks like uh, these guys are getting attacked from, from two different directions. Let's head up here. So, yeah. Now, how does this game compare to Attila? Um, it's a lot better than Attila if I'm just looking at it, you know, head to head. How do these guys have some kind of advantage? All right, whatevs. Um, let's just uh, maintain the siege. So... It's better than Attila because of the things that I mentioned in the campaign map earlier. The battles are very similar, but they don't feel quite as rushed as the battles did in Attila. If you get units like Berserkers or Long Axes and other stuff like that, yeah. I mean, battles can be over pretty quickly because of the charge bonus. But when you don't have those types of units, um, the battles tend to last longer and they're, and they're fairly satisfying. Um, the research system is more satisfying in this game, in my opinion. Um, and then the recruitment system is something, honestly, I'm not very fond of, but some people like it. So I, I think the recruitment system's kind of kind of stupid, to be honest, like where you have to wait forever for units to be uh, viable because they're very, very slowly replenishing. So again, I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but some people are. And um, you can actually merge units and stuff to make it go faster. So there are ways to... Uh, to make it go faster and kind of get around it a little bit. Ooh, we used up some of our food there. We gotta watch it. Um, but yeah, so compared to Attila, I think it's good. See, here's the research screen. We finally got enough axe units, for instance, um, that we can start researching melee, uh, which I wanna do because this starts to give, uh, unlock new units and you can upgrade the units that you already have. And then it starts to add just like insane, awesome buffs to your axe units so you can focus um, on how you want to play. So again, I actually, I think the technology here, uh, the tech tree, is a lot more relevant than Attila. Um, the game runs the same in terms of performance. It's basically the same as Attila, which is poor. Um, if they've made any improvements, I can't really notice it. Now, of course, when Attila was out, I was gaming in 1080p, and it was on older hardware. I'm now gaming at 1440p, and it is on relatively new 
hardware. Um, so definitely different um, set of circumstances, but running this game at 60 frames and 1440p, I have a GTX 1080 Ti and a, an i7-8700K, and look at this, the stinking rebel army is down here growing. And it is very difficult to run this game um, at 60 frames. It just is. It is not easy to do. So, something to be aware of, right? Uh, I still don't understand. By the to fight you. I mean, am I missing Take something here? Is there veins? Contribution to the defenses. Axemen? Long axes? I mean, this army doesn't look that threatening to me. Pretty sure we can take them, but we'll find out if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah. Anyway, a lot, lot of reasons why I think this game is a little bit better than Attila. You still have the naval battles. If that was a thing for you, you've got the naval landings. Um, overall, it's a better feel than Attila. So if, if you liked historical titles and you had fun with Total War Attila, you'll like this game. Uh, some people are saying, well, it's not worth it because it's basically just a reskinned Attila. It is basically just a reskinned Attila, but again, the campaign map is better. Um, so, if you want to call it a reskinned Attila, I, I don't guess I would highly disagree with that statement. But, um, sure. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's get our Axemen out of here. But whether or not you think it's worth your money is something that I'd really rather leave... Uh, up to you all, right? Um, because is it worth my money? Uh, I think so. Um, I think it would be worth my money. Uh, again, I, w I probably wouldn't play it a lot, honestly, because of Warhammer. But that's that's a personal thing. Would I be able to get enough hours of enjoyment out of it to justify the price for me? Yes, I think so. Um, so, but I mean, that's just my opinion. Now, if if you're a huge Warhammer fan, and you're not sold on this because it's like Attila, and you just like Warhammer better, then this game isn't going to be for you. That's that's just, again, my... Shut up, I'm trying to talk. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, that's just my take on this game. So hopefully that gives you all a little bit of feel. But again, look at this siege map versus Warhammer, right? You could have done uh, ships here as well. The gate goes all the way around the city. There's buildings and stuff that act as a uh, choke points, and then there's this path all the way up to the high ground, where eventually you have the town center way back up here, where it can be, you know, defended. There's towers. There's there's definitely a lot more going on with siege battles in this game. Let's fast forward, get our troops to the walls. Let's get our archers up here. We're just going to try and move everything through the siege towers to do our work. Um, if we switch over to flaming shot, can we get rid of these towers? I'm going to try it. Hopefully I don't hit my own siege tower. Let's move up and get ready to take uh, more units through the uh, tower. I sent my most powerful units through the... Um, the siege towers first. We'll very, very slowly maybe damage the uh, the tower, but oh well. My archers aren't going to do a ton of good otherwise. Ah, maybe they can actually. Let's. They did bring back guard mode also, which was a small but nice thing. Got my sword herdman up here. How are they getting so beat up? Thanes. We gotta get some help up there for our Herdman. Alright, so we're gonna get our second wave of men heading up the, uh... Can we burn the, uh, gatehouse? Sure can. Go start burning. We routed one unit there. Some javelin men. Here come the pace! 
<laughs> Look at them all crammed up against the door. That's another Attila leftover. Everybody plow forward, then start rubber banding backwards. How quickly are we breaking our way through the gates? We're up to 19. Look at him trying to go up the wrong siege tower. So this is stuff that was never really fixed very well. Let's just break the gate open and try and get in that way. Stop firing because we may be doing friendly fire. We're not doing a lot of damage. So let's keep working our way up. Siege tower. So our Thanes and Axemen are doing pretty good over here. Let's go engage these Axemen. Start pushing forward with these Thanes. Our sword herd men are uh, getting pretty beat up. The battle is turning in our favor. There we go. Lost a, or they lost a spear unit there, but we've got a. Let's pull this unit over. Do a little bit of outflanking here. Start moving in. Move around and outflank here. Come on, sword herdman, hang in there. You can get through this. Bring these other units over here. Our general is under attack. All right, Guthfried. I took the gates away. The enemy general is dead. That's good news. Ah, we just got our uh, sword herdman shattered. What are these guys doing? Defeated almost all the enemy units here. There's just a few other units standing on top of the walls. Again, this is where I said the AI still probably has room to improve. It's all still a little bit loud too, sound-wise. Uh, here, let's try that. There we go. That might balance in just a bit better. Alright, so these Thanes are all they have left. Yeah, overall, um, if you if you like Attila, if you're really into historical Total Wars, I do think you should pick this up. Um, if you're into British history at this time point, again, you should pick it up. The game looks good, especially considering it's built in a, an engine that's several years old. Um, it's fun to play. Uh, I mean, I, I have fun with it, even though I like Warhammer better. I still have fun with it, so... If you're really into Warhammer, then this one may be not for you. Or if you're just really looking to get something new from a history standpoint, well, maybe you need to wait it out for Three Kingdoms if this doesn't suit your, your fancy, right? But overall, um, it landed exactly where I expected, which was I knew it wasn't going to beat Warhammer, but I figured it would be better than Total War Attila because they've learned a lot of stuff since they made Total War Attila. And, and again, that's exactly where this game ended up. It is slightly cheaper than a uh, brand new title. Not a lot, but it's just a bit cheaper. So anyway, overall, I'd say it's pretty decent. I'm not going to like assign a number or anything to it because I don't think that that does us any good at this point to have me assign something to it. I think that you hear what I said and you can think for yourself on what that means to you. Um, let's go upgrade Guthrie. I'm gonna do this forager again, which gives me extra food makes his replenishment faster I really want his replenishment to be as fast as possible because replenishment can feel rather slow sometimes in this game after uh, Hang on. What was that? Oh, we can issue a governor or we can assign a governor Let's take uh, this guy here Put him in as a governor doesn't have great loyalty, but maybe this will help us make him get better loyalty over time. Send a turn, and then on the next turn, I'm going to spend some money on some buildings. But so far, our war's going pretty good. 
The English hate our guts, but I think that's kind of part of being the great army, right? <laughs> what do you all think of Total War Thrones of Britannia? You gotten to see other people play it? You gotten to see me play it? Where do, where do you land at? I know you maybe haven't played the game yourself yet, but what are your thoughts? Uh, personally, I think that, um, that that CA, I like the idea, I like the spin-off type of Total War, um, but I think that they should have taken the time to put it in a newer engine, which probably kind of defeats the purpose here, right? Um, they were probably looking for something that they could develop faster. Uh, versus um, having to put it in a whole new engine or anything else like that. So I think I understand why they chose not to. Um, but I, I think it hurts them a little in the end. Because it takes away a little bit of excitement that they probably would have had. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to move back because we may need, we may need reinforcements. Impossible. Our allies may try and take back some of this land rather than let us get it. I may let them uh, try and assault these guys first. But if I can get there and siege it, they may come and reinforce me. We can try and get our lands back. So our food is up again. This is good. Uh, let's take a look at the different settlements. We can get even more food as well, which we are absolutely going to do. We're going to spend, spend, spend on food building so that I can support a larger army. And then uh, we also, at some point, will need to start buffing up our economy a little bit. We're not bad uh, for money right now. We're in decent shape. And these folks who declared war on me are, I'm sure, regretting it heavily. I've got a lot of allies, and we've captured a lot more territory and become a lot more powerful in general. See, my allies just took the Cherchebi or whatever. I wouldn't begin to know how to pronounce that. Uh, the English is super mad at me, so let's maybe just uh, do this. We'll balance things back a little bit. We'll try and play things kind of gray here. But obviously there's benefits to having the army be happy too. So I don't want to make the English too happy. <laughs> we'll give them occasional breadcrumbs, but we, we don't want to make them too happy. Our foes shall fall. Okay, these guys got wrecked. Uh, this is not an enemy Your army. Chance. An army. Yeah, Strat Cult. We're not at war with them. And it looks like our ally is headed north to uh, do our job for us here. So for the moment, it looks like our lands are relatively safe. So... Let's take a look here, see some of the different things we can do. Uh, there's some buildings that should directly increase my income. I know mines will do that. There's more food available there, which don't get me wrong, I like food, but yeah, this kind of stuff increases trade. Here you go. Yeah, this this good money right here. Let's end another turn. I do really like the music. It seems very mood appropriate. I do want to beat the campaign, <laughs> but someone mentioned like, oh, I bet Air's going to give this up because people won't watch it. I am worried about that because <laughs> for a new Total War game, this hasn't gotten a lot of views from you all. And I don't know if it's just because it could be because my channel has become so focused on Warhammer that the people who used to watch, um, who used to watch historical Total War on my channel kind of gave up. That's possible. That could explain... Holy crap, see this is the kind of stuff that I both like and dislike um, with these new systems. These guys will probably get down here and take this from me for a turn. Because they can get these one unit armies behind you, see it's just 26 men. So I like the minor settlement thing, it's kind of cool. I don't like this, where 26 men can come in and take over a minor settlement. Could that happen in real life? I, I don't know. 
I'm not here to argue whether or not it can happen in real life. I'm just saying it annoys me, and I'm not a big fan of it. So, does that make sense? Uh, let's do this one. Extra melee skill. That'll make our armies absolutely absurd. Uh, we don't have enough money to build anything else this turn, so let's end another one. Oh, I forgot to go after what used to be my settlement down there. Allies may have retaken it. We'll see. But yeah, I would like to beat the campaign. I'd have to look and s check the objectives to see how long it'll go, because if not a lot of people are watching it, then I certainly don't want to drag it out. But if you all are watching it and you're enjoying it, by all means. Yeah, see? Look at that. Take my settlement, and then they try and recruit four or five more units so that hopefully they can withstand it whenever I come back to get them. This kind of thing happens a lot. Um, sometimes it's fun protecting these, and sometimes it's just straight we'll annoying. See, so, it just depends on the situation. Like, right now, it's not terribly annoying. But when you're fighting multiple wars across many, many fronts, and you're trying to manage, like, three or four tiny armies to deal with their three or four tiny armies, again, I don't know, maybe you like that. I don't. Seems a little pointless. I'd rather just fight big battles, but maybe it's more representative of the way things could have been, right? There could have been small bands of raiders and other stuff making life difficult for you. Yeah, <laughs> our allies took our settlement, so there's another annoying AI behavior. You get the um, you get the rebellion, and then the AI moves in and takes your territory. Low public order. So this place is at risk of rebellion. Let's move over there. And we'll try and cover these potential rebellions. There's low public order in these areas, too. There's nothing we can really build here. Yeah, we can't change that building. So, not much I can do about that. Let's go in here real quick and see what else we can build that'll build up our income. The church does help public order. Industry. Let's build up the abbey and then we'll build up like the mines and other stuff once we have a little bit to offset it. This general. Let's get him better at replenishing. That's just my favorite way to go. I mean, obviously, you can upgrade your generals differently than I'm doing here. Alright, been a pretty successful war, a first war. The question is where we're going to go next. Um, I'd like to build up my infrastructure a bit across my settlements, really get a good war machine going and try and do some of the research that will let us recruit some higher tier units. Yeah, our enemies are nearly destroyed up here. We, we might try and go do one more land grab right here. Will Risk of rebellion, it's still just this spot down now here. This may help calm that down. Looks like our governor is gonna level up here. Let's um let's give him a scribe. Help him be a little bit better at governing. And then uh let's check out and see if there's any yeah, that's not the button I meant to click. Let's check out and see if there's any useful There's tons of stuff to build. We need stuff that's going to help public order. If we build that, maybe we can build something to help with public order. If we can try and get public order solidified, upgrade some of our settlements, get some economic upgrades going. Holy, 20 stack? It's a good thing they're my ally. My allies aren't kidding either. I just don't want to recruit a bunch of units right now because I don't want to pay the upkeep. I'm uh, doing fairly well we with my upkeep as it is. Let's go ahead and go take this real quick. Marching through the cold. Yeah, I knew these guys would be weak because they had just recruited a bunch of those units. Give them a swift kick in the nuts and take their settlement. Rely on us. 
<laughs> indulge the locals. Yeah, I'm sure they really like me right now. Eliminate Northload. Yay, the army likes me more. But the English hate me. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? This building needs repair. I'll bet it does. Let's repair it. So, there we go. Still at risk of rebellion down here, but we started building that up. Let's check. Let's again just find some stuff to build here. Let's go ahead and uh, crank up the food. I, mean, I need to do this one next time. Get some extra <coughs> income out of the copper mine. And we can go ahead and start recruiting some more units into our main army so that we have one big brutal army with our faction leader. And then we can probably just have several smaller armies spread throughout as defensive forces. You gotta keep those uh, forces loyal though. Um, if you have a general who becomes disloyal, he can defect and take all the troops that you've given him with him, and it can become a big problem. So something to keep in mind. Okay. So, here we are. Uh, let's go check out... here yeah actually probably wouldn't hurt to build this too yeah food production is going way up now we got a few buildings uh, that we're working on they're gonna take away some of it we finished some more research so yeah this will unlock house Carl's Danelaw Axeman uh, we can upgrade our current Axeman so we're definitely getting some nice upgrades here that's going to be huge. 15 melee skill. It's going to make our guys brutal. So yeah, usually when I get a little bit of a lull in the war, I like to do this type of thing. Because uh, being at war for too long can wear on your... It depends on your faction, honestly. With this one, right now, the army likes it, right? Uh, but there's other factions you can play as, like some of the English factions, where too much war will kind of wear on the people and they get tired of it. So it's something that you gotta balance out. Uh, let's give you some upgrades here. We got a governor. Let's give him another scribe point. And then governor here. Scribe. Okay. So, yeah. Public order's not good in these two provinces, but we've at least fended off the potential for rebellion here, which is definitely good news. Let's upgrade that copper mine, because I've been saying I was going to do that. That's all the time I have for this episode. We captured some more territory. Uh, we still have a couple of people that we're at war with over here. Um, looks like my ally is headed over to get them, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, I might actually think about going to war with this faction here. However you say that, it's Sirsin, Sirsin, Sirkin, whatever it is. Wow, they go way up north here. But it might be kind of fun to take away at least some of these uh, more southerly settlements from them. Or Stratcult. So I don't know. They've got some, some holdings down here that I would certainly like to take care of. Let's look at our objectives. So if we want to do like a short conquest victory, we need 10 provinces in full. Direct ownership or vassals. Right now we're at 4. And we need 50 settlements, so that would be one. Or we can achieve 256 fame, or short kingdom victory, dis defeat seven factions. We've done three, and we already control the uh, main piece here. So there's a few different ways that we can do kind of a short victory. And that's, again, this is another, I like this, how they have different routes that you can take to victory too, depending on your play style. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed this. Hopefully it gave you some thoughts on the game. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I will see you soon.